There was very negative press coverage at the time, and public opinion, while agreeing that segregation in interstate facilities was wrong, on the whole did not support the Freedom Rides as a technique to remedy this. Uh, in the South, the riders were viewed as outside agitators, even though Southern blacks constituted 40% of the riders. And this is where my story picks up. Um, my family was Jewish, but completely secular. Um, this means liberal politics and Jewish food, but not going to the synagogue. <laughs> And we were politically radical. My mother was a communist and a naturalized citizen. She had been born in Warsaw. Civil rights was a very important cause for her, and it was part of her attraction to the Communist Party. My father was a postal worker, in other words, a federal worker. I started to become politically active as a teenager during the McCarthy years, and both my parents felt at risk for this, my mother as a former communist and a naturalized citizen, and there, were, there was, I think, at least one incident of a naturalized citizen being deported. And of course, my father in a federal job. But their feeling was that this was the way they had brought me up. I was acting on their principles, and they didn't try to interfere. I considered myself a socialist. I was a member of a very small Eugene V. Depp Society at Brooklyn College, and I participated in the youth marches for integrated schools that were held in Washington in 1958 and 1959. We did things also like picketing Woolworths in New York while the citizens were going in in southern cities. At the time of the Freedom Rides, I was a graduate student at Cornell and SNCC sent a recruiter to the campus. And several of us signed up to go on the rides. When the day came to go, I thought we were going as a group, but I was the only one at the bus station at that day, on that day. although uh, someone else, another woman went down later, and it turned out that a couple of men had gone down earlier. Uh, but I took the trip to Nashville down by myself. I was 21 at the time, which was a good thing, because if you were under 21, SNCC required that you bring a permission slip from your parents. <laughs> My parents would have given me a hard time about this. I mean, up till then, they supported me, and my mother still supported me, but my father was very angry. They were really, they, they were older. They knew the situation. They were really very terrified for my safety. Uh, but in the end, again, uh, this was the way they had brought me up, and uh, off I went. Um, I'm not an especially brave person, and um, I'm not a person who can rouse other people to action. The one thing I feel I can do is bear silent witness, put my body where it's supposed to be. And also, I was more or less an adolescent. I didn't, you know, we have feelings of immortality. Nothing is going to happen to me, I felt. And the only justification for this was by then, the Freedom Rides had gotten a lot of publicity. The newspapers reported every incident. Um, police authorities were on alert. And the understanding was when the ride arrived in Jackson, Mississippi, where we were headed, the riders would be quietly arrested immediately and taken to the safety of jail. And that, that's really the way it operated. So the first stage in the ride uh, for those people that SNCC had recruited was to go to Nashville, where SNCC had its headquarters. So I was met at the uh, bus station. We were put up in the dormitories at Fisk University, and we were given a kind of training program. The ride was explained to us what we would expect. We were given a, a training session in nonviolence, what to do if you're attacked, how to fall so that you don't hurt yourself, that kind of thing. Uh, and then, so we were given tickets for Jackson, Mississippi, and our group of five went down by train. Most people went down by bus, but we went down by train. When we reached the border of Mississippi, 
we had one black woman with us, and she moved all the way to the back of the train to the colored car. She had been given instructions by SNCC to do this. This was really very hard for us, and it must have been hard for her too, because she was from Elmira, New York. She hadn't grown up with this kind of segregation. But the reason for it was to avoid our being arrested before we reached Jackson. When we arrived at the bus, oh, we, the, it was an overnight train, and the train stopped in the middle of the night at Meridian, Mississippi. This is near where the three civil rights workers, Cheney, uh, Schwerner, and uh, Goodman were killed a few years later. When we were stopped at the train station, there were men walking back and forth on the platform with hats and jackets. Well, we knew who they were. Who would wear a hat in the middle of the summer unless they were FBI? And it was oddly reassuring. I mean, they knew they were coming. They were watching to see there was no trouble. So we arrived in Jackson uh, very early in the morning. The police were waiting. We sat all together in the white waiting room. We were asked to move on. We refused to move on. We were put under arrest and loaded into the paddy wagon that was there waiting for us. The first frightening moment for me in the city jail was when that metal door clanged shut. I mean, it makes a terrific noise. I still cringe a little when I see it on TV in a crime program. We were arraigned that afternoon, uh, and the judge was getting angry. I don't know whether we were the sixth, seventh, eighth group to come through. And he decided he was going to give us the maximum sentence. A uh, $200 fine, four months in prison. This is for a misdemeanor, breach of the peace. Um, the strategy was that we would serve out our sentences. Um, and and of, of course, I think for our group, there wasn't a choice. The earlier groups just got the $200 fine. They could have paid the fine, but we all knew we were going to serve out at least part of our sentences. And we were taken to the Hines County Jail, where Helene and I met. Uh, the cell was built to house four people with a wash basin and a toilet that was open. This must be standard in jails. But our feeling was it's deliberately designed to humiliate. Um, I think I was the ninth woman in this cell for four. Uh, and we were actually issued pris prison clothing, a striped gray and white shirts and skirts. We were segregated by cell. Our cell was for white women. The black women were in the adjoining cell. The men were in another wing. If they shouted or they sang really loud, we could hear them. The men, I think, had originally been sent out to the county farm, uh, but some of them were beaten up, and so they were brought back to the jail for safety. 